Hi! <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, last episode was Herp Quest number seven. It was all about the wood frog. And if you haven't checked that one out, give it a shot because that was an unexpected surprise. And for me, last episode happened like 10 minutes ago because I really came out here during that episode to try to find what you're hearing around us right now, the spring peepers. And in Michigan, traditionally, that is the first frog to wake up from spring. Now in that last episode, I wanted to catch a spring peeper, but I was hearing a frog out here I didn't expect to hear, and I'd never really heard before, and I didn't know much about. Now I do. That was the wood frog. In fact, I'm hearing some of them, some of the ones I probably just released, I'm hearing them giving that uh, raspy quack, quick raspy quack, I'm hearing them give it now. That By the way, any of my students watching this, you go ahead and you make a gif meme out of that. That's my best imitation of a wood frog. But this episode, hopefully, is going to be about the spring peeper, because that's what I came out here for. And there's so many around here, I've just got to catch one. Understand, I've been out here, this is my third day. I heard them on March 26th, today is April 6th. Here's the best footage that I was able to get of them, and it's not that great of footage, and I didn't catch any. They are so very elusive. The spring peeper, in fact, you can hear a spring peeper up to two and a half miles away, as long as it's not a very windy day. That's crazy. Oh, and also, last episode, I had to pull out my field guide. Uh, this is the Audubon Society field guide. Uh, I'm not endorsing one field guide over another. In fact, I prefer to just have one of each and always cross-reference. But as far as constraints on the backpack, I brought this one this time. And uh, last episode, you saw me use it because I encountered a species I didn't expect that I'd encounter and didn't really know much about. These are always good to have with you. Even if you think you're going to go find the species that you're expecting to, does not mean you always will. Having a field guide around is very handy. But for the spring peeper, I don't really need this so much as far as the video goes. I know enough about the spring peeper, I can just talk off the top of my head about it. So let's go find one, and let's see if we can get some good footage. Here we go. Alright, uh, last video part that I shot was an hour ago. I can't tell you how frustrating this is. You can hear them everywhere. They are all around you, and I have not seen a single one. All right, let's keep at it while we still got sunlight. I am, can you hear me? I am right by one right now. Okay, he's chirping again. So what I actually had to do to catch this guy, my net could not get in to the brush he was hiding under. So I actually had to use my hand to scoop him up and then gently put him in the net, like put my hand in the net and then open it up. That's how I got him in there. Alright, let's put him in the water. And by water, I mean my container here so we can get a better shot of them. Alright. For a while there, I thought this was going to be my white whale for this year. I did not think I was going to catch him. Pseudochris crucifer. This guy calls in uh, late March. You know, earlier I said he's one of the first to wake up, but uh, really beating him out is the wood frog. Still, these guys start calling March to June. Usually, though, like, late March. And, as you've seen him climb around on my thing here, he's got toe pads for climbing. He's not the best climber as far as, uh, definitely a tree frog beats him out. 
but he's a he's a decent climber and there's a bunch of different morphs a bunch of different colors that these guys can be they can be tan brown olive they can be gray you know these guys can still be active even at like minus eight degrees celsius which uh i'll have to do that conversion at home <laughs> and i'll put it here on the screen but when uh they are frozen they're not really frozen when water freezes at zero celsius they can have negative eight celsius and they are still still alive um still potentially active too some of the fluid in their cells can freeze and they're still good and according to the information i was looking up you can have several hundred in a breeding community now i don't really know that there's a one to two hundred it just definitely sounds like that where i'm at but uh i would be seeing how small these little guys are yeah i would put the estimate at bare minimum a hundred and when you think about it too these you know these early breeding frogs they're taking advantage there's an evolutionary advantage to being up this early in the year in the season and mating um you know you've got competition with some of these other frogs that have woken up too but also you've got then territory that because the green frog hasn't gotten going the bullfrog hasn't gotten going you've got territory that you can claim furthermore just not as much aquatic life is being active you got colder temperatures so things aren't looking for food as much that would sometimes eat these guys so if you get out there and you're breeding when the temperatures haven't really warmed up then not only are those predators just not really out and about too much yet but they don't even need as much food because they too are cold-blooded and they're not as active not going through resources as much these guys will eat uh all sorts of insects spiders and vertebrates what you typically expect a frog to eat they'll go for it and they're they're traditionally a signal of spring you know they're not always the first to wake up depends upon your location and what frogs are around you but also they are easily one of the loudest where you can actually hear these guys from two and a half miles away so it indicates to a lot of people including myself here in michigan spring has arrived when you hear the spring peepers you know spring is in full effect they're mostly a stable population as far as if you look at them as a whole but they are threatened in iowa they're threatened in kansas and when it comes to like a local population even if they're doing fine in like the state of michigan there's local populations that have been easily getting decimated on the decline and this is mostly just due to again loss of habitat and you know it's kind of a bummer to go through the same story with so many of these reptiles and amphibians less and less mar marshy wetlands where is it going to be doing what you saw it doing today where is it going to be breeding where is it going to be laying its eggs oh cute little bugger the spring peeper loud elusive and cute as a button oh my gosh a lot of respect for this frog a lot of respect for this signal that spring is here so thank you for joining me on this quest i'm rich lund here to remind you please when you go out there leave nature as good or better than you found it let's let this little fella get back to his business huh see you next time